The following is from Catfish Magazine, Volume 10. This was written a long time ago. This was written when I was in high school. And what it describes was written about something that happened even well before then. I always loved the fake letter as a humorous prank. Believability is extremely difficult, but the hilarity more than makes up for it. It is so cool to send fake letters to your friends. My good friend Travis, who lives in Brooklyn, South Dakota, is often a victim of my fake letters. Travis himself thinks the letters are stupid, but his father once told me to quit sending them that crap. I haven't talked to Travis for a really long time, which is something I regret dearly. So naturally, I haven't sent him any fake letters. I believe the last fake letter I sent him had something to do with the Charles Darwin Foundation, but I accidentally deleted the file on my computer, so I could not print it in this scene. In Brooklyn, South Dakota, there is hardly any things for youth to do. And I complained about Rockford, Illinois. But really, Rockford is just bigger than Brookings. It doesn't have a hell of a lot more to do, in essence. So when I visited his house from many of the cities I lived in, we often did things like play badminton. It was so very fun. Badminton is a wonderful, enjoyable game. Travis's father often played, which really added to the fun. Dennis, his father, is a friendly, often humorous guy. But don't take him off and get on his bad side. But I poked fun at Badman and my friends while we were playing. I was goofy like I so often am. So I thought it would be fun to send a letter from a make-believe badminton association reprimanding my friends for rule infractions. To add to the humor is this fact. There's a guy who works with me named... I'm not going to say his name. To protect his privacy. He's a fun guy and he's pretty nice. But I have liked to poke fun at him. One day I started talking about how good he was at pinball. Like that song, Pinball Wizard. I said that he won a lot of pinball competitions. People in the arcades really worship him. He gets 90% of his check converted into quarters and he spends all his free time at the arcade. And I went on and on about how he was a pinball legend. So during later days of work, he did something really funny. He began to tell everyone I was a world famous badminton player. Sorry about the shitty grammar. Here is a letter from Herbert Johnson, American Badminton Association, 3235 West Hampshire in Dubuque, Iowa, 54326. Dear my friend's parents, this letter is to inform you of your breaking of our official rules. Disciplinary action will be taken. Your violations. Poor maintenance and overall keeping of badminton grounds. Serving ahead of the designated serving line. Allowing more than four players per side in a match. Misuse of badminton rackets, i.e. throwing them. Playing of music which has parental discretion during badminton matches. Not waxing badminton equipment monthly. Excessive force applied to badminton nets. Players mocking the game of badminton. Allowing domestic animals to roam freely on badminton courts. Unclearly defining boundaries. We are going to be giving you a restricted badminton license for one year, which means you can only play badminton on your court from 12 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. And on Sundays, you can only play from 3 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. You will also be placed on probation for two years, meaning you must report to your badminton probation officer monthly. Your officer will be the father of a kid in the neighborhood across the street of the address in Brookings, South Dakota. He is our regional president of the Midwestern Badminton Branch. When a year is up, you may apply to take the test to gain back your full badminton privileges. You must also do 25 hours of badminton service, which that man across the street will coordinate for you. Sincerely, Professor of Badminton, Duke University and ABA American Badminton Association Rules President Herbert Johnson. One of the things after this my friend said that really told him this was not real was the fact the badminton probation officer was that dude's dad across the street. I took a badminton class in college because I was in my fifth year and I just needed to make 
up some credits to get through the year to be a full-time student. I only had to take a couple classes required. It was a good time. But I didn't show this to her, the teacher of the class. Federation Without Television also had tried to get a badminton guy to come in, but he went to Federation Without Television's website and said it was too anti-capitalistic for him, and he did not want to associate with somebody like me.